Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to a couple of RC discussions from the one of the traded papers called ZAT. Let's see. So it says if we imagine the action of a vaccine not just in terms of how it affects single body but also in terms of how it affects the collective body of a community it is fair to think of vaccination as a kind of banking of immunity. Let's see why because we are talking about a community here. Contributions to this bank, the banking of immunity, are donations to those who cannot or will not be protected by their own immunity, right? This is the principle of herd immunity and it is through herd immunity that mass vaccination becomes far more effective than individual vaccination. So he's saying that mass vaccination becomes much more effective than individual vaccination, correct? Perfect. Very relevant to what the world saw a couple of years back. Any given vaccine can fail to produce immunity in an individual and some vaccines like the influenza vaccine are less effective than others. But when enough people are vaccinated with even a relatively ineffective vaccine, viruses have trouble moving from host to host and cease to spread, sparing both the unvaccinated and those on whom vaccination has not produced immunity. So advantage to mass vaccination? This is why the chances of contracting measles can be higher for a vaccinated person living in a largely unvaccinated because people, larger number of people are unvaccinated than they are for an unvaccinated person living in a largely vaccinated community because there is a herd immunity that the committee might have achieved. Let's go to the next page. The unvaccinated person is protected by the bodies around her, herd immunity, bodies through which disease is not circulating because they have been vaccinated. But a vaccinated person surrounded by bodies that host disease is left vulnerable because they might not have been vaccinated to vaccine failure or fading immunity. We are protected not so much by our own skin, but what is beyond it true. The boundaries between our bodies begin to dissolve here because you're acting like one. Donations of blood and organs move between us, exiting one body and entering another and so too with immunity, which is a common trust as much as it is a private account because you're sharing things now. Those of us who draw on collective immunity owe our health to our neighbors. So we are talking about herd immunity majorly, how this is better and we are talking about mass vaccination. Agreed? Let's go to the first question. Uh, based on the passage, which of the following cannot be concluded? In other words, out of five options, I can conclude four options. Let's see. A vaccine cannot guarantee immunity in an individual, obviously. We were saying that at times, uh, just because there are people around you who are not vaccinated and you might be vaccinated, you would still not be immune. So this is not your answer. Our survival as a community is largely based on herd immunity. Did we really talk about survival? Uh, can I not say this option is slightly extreme and therefore could be an answer? Even relatively ineffective vaccines can stop the spread of viruses if enough people are vaccinated. Yes, herd immunity might taken and maybe an ineffective vaccine can still work. So C is to be concluded will not be your answer. Collective immunity protects those with compromised immune systems obviously because there's a collective immunity and the virus will not be able to travel. So you might have a compromised immune system but because the virus is not able to jump you would be protected not an answer. A vaccinated person may get infected if her surroundings are largely unvaccinated. We saw this in the first page and therefore this is not your answer. The official answer here would be option number B. Is that giving a slightly easy question? Let's go to this. Why does the author think about vaccination as a banking of immunity? Is because you're helping each other, you're sharing, it's not a private thing. Because it is like providing a safety net for those who are more vulnerable to disease. Safety net banking could be an answer. Because different vaccines contribute to a diverse portfolio. Were we talking about different vaccine contributing to a banking? No, it was not about that. Because it is a way to mitigate decreased health risk for those who may not have access to vaccination. No, it's about helping each other, right? Uh, and, and providing them a safety net. Uh, because when somebody is vaccinated, it is a deposit of protection against a particular disease. For him, it might be. But then you would probably not call that as a banking, right? Banking had a different connotation. So will not be your answer. Because it creates a reserve of immunity within a person's immunity system. I think what I could clearly imagine here is that it has to talk about more people because it's a banking of immunity and not within a person, 
right so we have to talk about more people and not within a person and therefore this has to be the context of the option which option number e is not and therefore the correct answer is option number a let's go to the next one based on the last paragraph of the passage which of the following would the author best agree with in any community immunity is transactional no it's not like buying selling it is an ethical obligation we have not talked about this unnecessary claims being introduced in times of health crisis community should come together to support and protect each other very vague sentence it has to be about uh, immunity vaccination and the author wasn't claiming this if you see right immunity of a community is interconnected correct because herd immunity and everyone plays a role to keep each other healthy your decision of getting vaccinated not vaccinated might drive a herd immunity so it's an option that i might want to keep on hold for now it is important to express gratitude the author was not talking about expressing gratitude and therefore the official answer here would be option number d perfect let's go to the next one the dreaded poem so let's quickly go to this in the darkened room a woman cannot find her reflection in the mirror maybe she's trying to find her own self waiting as usual at the age of sleep not able to sleep because she's disturbed in her hand she holds the oil lamp whose drunken yellow flames flickering yellow flames know where her lonely body hides so she's trying to find out something but she's sitting at the age of sleep disturbed is what i would say which of the following statements best conveys the theme of the poem the poem revolves around a woman whose liberty i think it was more about finding herself than about liberty being throttled so eliminated the poem explores the quality of life of a woman very vague it was not about quality of a life you might feel but that's very vague row very weak evidence the poem revolves around the women's feeling of alienation could be very she's trying to find herself but she's not able to do that so it's an option that i might very strongly keep on hold the poem laments the suffering and frustration of a women again very generic and we have option number c the poem celebrates it doesn't and therefore the official answer here is option number c it might sound very easy but poems are normally perceived to be difficult because they are very metaphorical we'll do a lot of poems in our practice sessions and on the youtube videos what do the lines the drunken yellow flames know where her lonely body hides best represent the lines represent flames that highlight the location very literal poems are metaphorical as i told you the lines represent flames as distorted memories that preserve her identity distorted yes preserve because they know where her lonely body hides so this is an option i would want to keep on hold for now the lines represent flames her as a desperate are the flames as a desperate pursuit or those are memories again eliminated the lines represent flames as forces that are aware of her solitude are they aware of her solitude or are they aware of her intent right so this is a problematic word here the lines represent flames as turbulent emotions of a nameless very vague nameless i do not know turbulent emotions i do not know it was about you know where her body hides this body over here is where she is trying to find herself and therefore distorted memories probably becomes the best way to represent it and therefore the official answer here would be option number 2 let's quickly go to the next one because it is so easy to judge the idiocy of others quite funny it may be sorely tempting to think this doesn't apply to you but the problem of unrecognized ignorance is one that visits us all unrecognized ignorance that means you do have same thing but you're not recognizing it and over the years have become convinced of one key overarching fact about the ignorant mind what one should not think of it as uninformed rather should, should one should think of it as misinformed important very very important line an ignorant mind is precisely not a spotless empty vessel but one that is filled with a clutter of irrelevant or misleading life experiences theories facts intuitions xyz xyz that regrettably have the look and feel of useful remember look and feel and the author is probably trying to say they might not be what you're trying to feel about them this clutter is an unfortunate by product of one of our greatest strength as a species we are unbridled pattern recognizer that means we have no limit to it and profligate theorizers often our theories are good enough to get us through the day or at least to an age where we can procreate but a genius for creative storytelling combined with our inability to detect our own ignorance can sometimes lead to situations that are embarrassing unfortunate or downright dangerous especially in a technologically advanced complex democratic society that occasionally invests mistaken popular beliefs 
with immense. As the humorist Josh Billings once put it, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It is what you know for sure that just ain't so, right? So it's about you knowing and what you feel about it is putting you into trouble. Ironically, one thing many people know about this quote is that it was first uttered by Mark Twain or Will Rogers, which just ain't so. I would have created a beautiful question. I love this irony. Let's go to the next page. Because of the way we are built and because of the way we learn from our environment, we are all engines of misbelief and the better we understand how our wonderful yet clutch ridden Rube Glodberg engine works, the better we can harness it to navigate toward a more objective. Unfortunately, we seem to not do it because of our ignorance, right? Unfortunately, we seem to not do it. And the author is lamenting that. Let's go to the first question. Which of the following statement is not true? So out of five options, four would be true of ignorant mind. An ignorant mind is unaware of its own limitations, obviously. And that is where the author is saying you are misinformed. So not an answer. An ignorant mind theorist without robust evidence because unbridled. So again, not an answer. An ignorant mind is often filled with unfounded and misguided distractions. Yes. An ignorant mind succumbs to illusionary pattern, right? Brainless pattern recognition is what the author was lamenting. So we can we can conclude about this. An ignorant mind often fuels skepticism. I'm not sure this was being talked about. And therefore, the official answer here would be not true would be option number E. Let's go to the next one. Based on the passage, what does the author best mean when he say we are all engines of misbelief? That means we derive it, right? We are naturally inclined to form and often share. Share is this arrow, misleading and inaccurate beliefs. So could be an option. We are always fooled, probably a challenge here, by ignorance to spread information or misinformation. Again, not an answer. Our brains are wired with certain heuristics that can lead to systematic errors in judgment. We are not talking about systematic errors in judgment. So option number C is eliminated. Driven by misbelief, we blend our creativity. <laughs> not really. We are prone to holding beliefs that are not necessarily true. Very vague. And plus, remember, I had to find out an option which says share. Because I'm quoting a word called engine and therefore E will not be an answer. Your official answer would be option number A. Let's go to the last. With which of the following statements will the author agree the most? Our desire to see patterns in everything makes us unable to detect misbeliefs in others. No, it was about you because you are wanting to see patterns. You could probably spread the ignorance, but it was not about misbelieving in others. So A is eliminated. We must try not to see patterns in everything. The author is not being that discreet, that strict, right? He's saying not to see patterns. No, do, but do, don't do an unbridled way. We must be aware that the patterns we say may not necessarily reflect the truth. I wanted to keep this option on hold because when I was doing this, I said maybe because it's a may not. The more we are sure of something, the more we are wrong about it is <laughs> not being said by the author. We must be skeptical of the beliefs that we have regardless how true they seem. Again, probable and then skeptical. Here there is a problem. We must be aware of the patterns. But are you? Can you be? And therefore clearly option number E sounds better than option number C. And official answer here would be option number E. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed uh, these three passages of which one was a poem. And I'll see you guys in the coming sessions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.